Once again, I'm Christian Clark. I'm the new Utah Main Street Program Coordinator, and this is our Utah Main Street webinar series. It's a monthly webinar series um, where we discuss topics relevant to our local Main Street programs uh, for training and for um, educational purposes. So our webinar today is uh, events and promotion on Main Street. And this is just a little summary. Um, vibrant downtowns and Main Street District's health community events and activities events welcome residents and visitors to downtown shops, add excitement and build community fabric. Festivals, events and art have helped revitalize the historic Bernal downtown area. This session summarizes how the new events are organized and funded as well as the positive impact on Main Street and the community. So our presenter, as the summary noted, will be uh, Bernal City uh, with uh, Quinn Benyon, Bernal City Manager, and Leisha Coltharp. Let me know if I pronounced that incorrectly, Leisha. Um, Director, of, Director of Uinta County Travel and Tourism. And once again, that's events and promotion on Main Street. And I think that we're about ready to get started. Quinn and Leisha, um, we have a Q&A down at the bottom of your Zoom. You should see a little link, a little button that says Q&A. So if you have questions, you can put them in there. You can also put them in the chat. All right. You feel ready to get started, Quinn and Leisha? Yeah, okay. yeah, we are. Um, Go ahead and take over. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, welcome from Vernal. Uh, we, we're excited to share with you um, some of the items that we've been able to, to as, a, as a community, um, create and, and promote here the last few years. Um, we we want to give a big thank you to all of you. We've, we've learned a lot from other communities. We've learned from your your events and your example and and so we we really feel like we're just sharing our experience in hopes that 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 you know can help you in some way just as you've helped us in in other ways so we we also um feel like it would be best we're going to be covering a lot of events and a lot of different topics um so we feel like it's best if you ask your questions as we go along instead of wait till the very end so we'll be monitoring the hand raises and the chat line uh, so that we can answer them as we're talking about it instead of trying to go back and, and remember what the topic was at that time. Uh, but we're again, we're we're pleased. I, I invited Leisha because you'll notice very quickly this is very much a partnership and, and it and it's been successful because it is a partnership with so many individuals to make these events successful. So I'm going to go ahead and start. The presentation um, and this you should be seeing it um, on screen <clears throat> we're focusing primarily today on events and activities in the downtown area or on a main street um, and there's so many positives that come from that as all of you have experienced you bring people downtown, you bring attention to downtown, you have shoppers that are there, you're, you know, you're, you're helping the, the downtown businesses succeed, but it but also has a lot of um, unspoken benefits of creating community fabric, creating this community um, networking and, and, and community pride. So we'll, you'll see some of those themes come out today. Um, so again, we're we're great. This is a part of downtown Vernal. Um, we're going to share with you um, some slides. We're we're a, a whole other discussion could be um, some of our revitalization efforts and and improvements. Um, that that would be a different discussion. Um, but you, we'll give you a little flavor of what downtown looks like right now. Um, some of our trends are not good. That's why we're trying to reverse them and and trying to make a a lot more uh, vibrant downtown. Um, we have a lot of small local businesses, which is excellent. We love that mom and pop shops. We we unfortunately have declining taxable value in the downtown area. 
We have vacant storefronts. They're they're starting to fill now, but we've had quite a few in the past. Um, we have very um, fragmented parking lots and unmaintained parking lots, underutilized space, and a definite need for walkable because Highway 40 runs right down through the middle of, of Vernal. And many of you, same situation where we have a five lane road, lots of traffic, lots of truck traffic. And how do we make that to be pedestrian and quaint and, and a good place to walk? So that's our challenges. Um, just to give you a picture of <laughs> kind of of our backside. This is not one we're proud of, but it is what it is. Um, so this example of an unmaintained lot, this is on the backside of Main Street. Um, within one year, this will look entirely different. We have, um, well, I'll go to the next slide. We have vacancies just off Main Street. We have underutilized spaces, this uh, car storage yard, first east, first south, not the highest and best use of a downtown area. Um, all three of those pictures are going to look entirely different a year from now. We've been able to, with our own resources and county resources and grants, we have $8 million going into the downtown this summer, and all three of those will look entirely different. But again, that's that's some physical stuff for, for later. Um, so, Leisha, we already have some questions. Um, let's see. Um, their chats. Oh, they're okay. They're about credits. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, so Leisha, if you want to... Uh, go ahead and do uh, Roger Brooks. Yeah, perfect. So uh, uh, five years ago, actually, um, Quinn had just moved to Vernal, back to Vernal to be the city manager. And we had secured Roger Brooks to come and do a presentation um, on our community. It was a grant through the Utah Office of Tourism. And um, it was kind of the first steps on um, revitalizing main streets across the state of Utah. And Roger came and he secret shopped our community. And, and several of you that are on this call, um, he probably did the same for your communities. You can jump on YouTube and you can um, search Roger Brooks presentations in Utah or your community itself, or you can do Vernal, you went to county and you can find those presentations that are recorded. Um, you can watch them and get more details, but I'm just gonna do a little summary of kind of what Roger said when he came and secret shopped our neighborhood, um, our, our community. So he gave us 93 suggestions of things that we could do to make our, our main street and our, our area better for visitors and for locals alike. Um, the number one priority that he gave us was to um, revitalize our downtown. At that point, when he came, we had so many empty storefronts along our main street that we had worked with our history center and we had printed off these great big um, pictures of like uh, rafting in the early ages and fishing and just different kind of tourism type stuff, but also like nostalgic to the area. And we would hang them in the windows of the empty storefronts to try to like curb that, that, that appeal of nothing being there. Um, and so, and that was going on while he was here. So he saw all that. Um, he also gave us a goal to program over 200 events a year in our downtown um, because events draw people and they draw people into your businesses and they help your economy thrive. And so we're working on that and we'll talk later on in the presentation what we've done and what we've um, been able to accomplish uh, as we've worked towards those 200 events. Um, 200 days of events so that, you know, if we've got a multi-day event, that can, if it's a three-day event, it can count as three of the events. It doesn't have to be like 200 actual events going on. Um, this also led to the downtown plan, which is in the process. Um, the downtown plan includes sections on active design and events and what's going on. And then, and that's in progress right now. Um, the next slide. So additional things that he talked to us about were a wayfinding system, and we've been able to put that into place. Um, he pointed out some great stuff that were businesses that were just like one block off of Main Street, but a visitor would have no idea that they were there unless you have a wayfinding system telling them that they're there. We all use Google, but we also all know that Google doesn't exactly give us the best directions sometimes. Um, he also pointed out blade signs. And we've been able to implement those along most of our downtown businesses. Uh, so they look uniform and they, they help everyone know what's, you know, what's, what business is there. Also benches, 
Um, flowers and hanging baskets, he commented on those. You can see from the picture, um, Vernal is known for their beautiful flowers um, that hang from the light posts and also um, in the planters along the main the main road. And, and they're beautiful. They, they make our main street um, one of the prettiest in America, I think. It, um, it helps the vacant storefronts look a lot better. <laughs> yes, it helps the vacant storefronts look a lot better. Um, community downtown plaza, we'll hit on that as well. Um, that's a great place to hold those 200 events. He suggested we create a best of, um, and we we have some different marketing material that we do. The best of dinosaur land, you know, the best restaurant, the best hiking trails, the best main street shop, the best art gallery, that type of stuff. Um, curb appeal. No one wants to go into a business along Main Street that doesn't have good curb appeal. If there's a whole bunch of weeds outside, you don't want to go in there and have dinner because who knows what you're going to get on the inside. Um, sidewalk kiosks. We have some great kiosks. We're famous for our partial post bank. Um, the Zion's Bank was shipped. The bricks were shipped um, here because it was cheaper. And so then, then trucking them or bringing them off or some buggy. So we have some great kiosks that talk about that. And he, he liked that. And that's a great thing to have on your main street. We also have bike racks. He pointed out, I, uh, I found a bike rack, but I would have had no idea. And so with the help of the Chamber of Commerce, and um, we were able to paint those bike racks green. And now all of a sudden, everybody can see them and they can put their bike. And then also we've worked through a project to be able to create some dinosaur bike racks. And we'll, we'll show those later on as well. Um, clean up that landscaping. He also suggested outdoor dining. You all know when you visit a main street, whether it's Park City or Jackson Hole or wherever you're going, you love to be able to sit outside during the summertime and to be able to um, enjoy your dinner or a drink um, while you're enjoying the atmosphere of the downtown. Um, also, staying open late. You've got to stay open past when people are working or past when they're outside recreating, whatever they're doing. If you're closing at five, there's no way people can get into your business. 70% um, of first-time sales come from curb appeal. That's part of the 787. So 70% of first-time customers um, come into your business because of the curb appeal. Whatever's in your windows, your signage, whatever you've got going on, that's what draws them in. And then they'll be a repeat customer. 80% of customers are women. Um, they, they spend the highest amount of money when they go into your retail shop and 70% and then the other seven, so seven, eight, seven, the other seven is, um, 70% of all retail spending happens after 6 PM along the main street. And so if you're closing your doors before 6, 6 PM, look at how much you're missing out on. And that's, that's kind of what we learned from Roger Brooks and what we've been trying to put into play over the last five years. Yep. So th thanks, Leisha. And we're going to shift a little bit into the events itself, but we thought that was a good summary of what we learned there. Um, and it, just real quick, advantages of downtown revitalization. This is speaking to the choir. You guys all know this. Community pride, perception. We need something to do. Successful businesses reverse our downtown property trends, prepare for future development, have a plan where people have an idea what you're looking for and then we we absolutely need to diversify our economy we're kind of a one single note and we're trying to make that uh, broader one of the themes going through our downtown plan we we heard over and over and we kind of create it was became our motto um if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together so we we absolutely emphasized uh partnerships and that has ended up being uh, very fruitful um, and, and you have similar in your communities, but just to highlight them, um, these have been really key um, components. And I, I speak highly on the county involvement. I, I don't know what your relationships in each of your locations, but we could not do this without the county involvement and their participation. And, and it does help that we're the county seed. It does help that we're the largest city and, and we have that relationship. Um, so we developed a downtown plan. To, we started um, two years ago and finished it just over a year ago. One of the elements was to make it active and connected, one of the four features. Um, and, and this is where we create uh, event space, but also create events and recreational opportunities. Um, and a, just a quick slide, um, Leisha put this one together and, and you know, again, you, you recognize this too, but anytime you bring someone in from outside the area, you have hotel food transportation shopping that occurs um, and, and hopefully that's on our main street. And, and we, we have seen dramatic impact on our restaurants and hotels. In fact, 
at the end of the summer, we had several say they were just like, we can't take any more. This is and we're like, no, we're bringing more. So um, it's it's been really good um, success there. We were kind of we we had existing downtown events and a little bit of art. And I'm just going to highlight really quick because we we want to focus on the new ones just because I don't know, we're more familiar with them. We we help create them and maybe give some insights on how that occurred. Um, but we already had a Thursday night event that went through the summer and it was a combined a live after five, which is done by a radio station. It's kind of our Vernal's American Idol. Um, and then and then we and we count we uh, the off Thursday nights we had what's called Vernal Excitement. It was a variety of different uh, presentations of dancing or shows or singers. And so Thursday nights downtown where we're, we had something going then farmers market on Saturday morning that's becoming more and more successful especially as we give attention that's been good and then our big halt downtown event was Holly days it's still our biggest event and it's fabulous it's the day after Thanksgiving and it, it, it's wonderful I could go on about that but we're we're, we're going to focus on the new ones that we've focused on um, the last couple of years and we will go through these fairly rapidly because there's a lot of them to cover um so kick it off. There, there's our, our outline of where we're headed. Um, so Alicia, you want to talk about the murals? Yeah. So murals are growing to be popular around communities all over the country. Um, and so in about 2019, 2020, we you know, started looking for um, businesses that would allow us to paint on the side of their building. So the top mural that you see, um, the one that says this is Vernal, we were able to work with the Youth City Council and they actually went in and painted all those geometric shapes and um, helped with um, the logo, putting the logo on there and just getting that first mural started. That's that's the first one we had in town. It's probably the most photographed mural we have in town still today. It's next to um, like our shaved ice business during the summer. And so everyone stops there and gets a picture. Um, in this process, um, we were able to, to work with a local artist. Um, he was on our in our art committee and he said, hey, I'd be willing to help the the youth city council with this mural and getting that going. And that's been super successful for him. So once he did that first one and then started getting some calls and doing a few others, um, he came and said, Hey, is there any way that tourism would be able to help um, pay for some of these murals around town? What could we do? So we came up with a, um, we came up with a, a program, a grant program. So the businesses have to pay into it. Um, or into it at the point when we were doing the program. So it was an 80-20. They had to pay 20% and then tourism would pay 80% in order to get the mural. Um, there's also some stipulations as far as their advertising. They had to, you know, tag you went to county tourism. They had to make sure that it was related to their business, but also it had to be something that was outdoor recreation, dinosaur focus, um, something that people would want to just stop and take a picture in front of. We didn't want it to be just uh, a mural um, next to their business that was just advertising their business and um, had no purpose um, other than just an outdoor sign for them. It had to have some component to where people would want to stop, get out of their car and, and get a picture and interact with the mural. Um, that was super successful. It was a $150,000 grant program that we ran. Um, 91 designs um, and TM art that you see on, on these murals down at the bottom, they were able to um, quit their full-time jobs and become full-time mural artists. So they go all over. They go into Colorado, Wyoming, um, along the Wasatch Front. They paint in, in home theaters. They paint businesses. They paint. They still paint murals on the walls um, around Vernal and around other, around other um, communities as well. Um, it's just been a super successful um, project for us. Um, I know that the Ogden community also has really put an investment into murals and done some really cool things with that. I think any time that you can bring art outside where people can interact with it um, is always a drawing point. And if it's on a business, most likely people are going to go inside and check out what's going on inside there as well. Next up, we this one's kind of a fun one. Um, it, it, we uh, our economic development created a young entrepreneur. Um, we call it Kids Marketplace. So these are, um, I think you can go as young as you want and up to sixteen. Um, and they 
we end up with about 30 a, a night. These are on Thursday nights that coincide with the music. And so they set up in the park and they sell everything from cotton candy to homemade art to their old Pokemon cards. <laughs> um, so anyway, it, it's been really good to draw people downtown and draw the families downtown. So that's been real, real successful. Um, we had a program. We want to introduce more dinosaurs back to Roger Brooks. So we did a, um, proposals to attract dinosaur bike racks. Um, we only did five the first round, but we hope we can, we can do some more. Um, and uh, anyway, th there's some examples of, of two of them there um, that we put in strategic locations. Um, and then there's been an organic effort to place painted dinos. Um, it, this really wasn't organized by the city or county, but people have started placing dinos in, their, in front of their business with different themes. And you've seen it in other communities. It's been going for years, um, but we, um, that's been kind of fun to see and, and play on that. So one of the new events, um, we call it the block party. Um, and that was, is a summer night on a Friday or Saturday. And we um, shut down Vernal Avenue and Main Street right at the very center of town and hold a concert. And this, uh, I think it started, Alicia, with this county commissioner dream of, hey, we're going to do this. And we're going to we're going to make this work. And um, we luckily and fortunately have have a um, a really good bypass route. So when we do shut down Main Street for events, um, UDOT's really easy to work with. And we we have to provide the, you know, all the traffic control and and police officers and to, to make it work. But um, so this is our second year that we've done this and bring in bring in a concert, um, trying to get, you know, a name that people recognize. And they do buy tickets, but a lot of it, we do have sponsors and tourism funds as well. And we've added food trucks, shop. Uh, the shopping is, is big, so people can walk downtown. And then we have a beer garden that's also popular. Um, so anything else there on, on that one, Leisha? No, I think that's great. All right, and then we have um, an annual Outlaw ATV Jamboree. And while the Jamboree itself doesn't take place right on Main Street, we do do a night parade, which you can see here in the pictures below, where once they finish the dinner at one of the local parks, they parade down Main Street. Um, the locals come out, which once again, then they get ice cream, then they go to dinner, they do whatever to come out and see all these ATVs that are lit up. We have roughly about 700 riders. It's about 2,000 hotel rooms that it brings in over a weekend. Um, and so it's a great um, economic impact to our community. Yeah, and it, we highlighted this one again because the rides go on in the mountain and, and you know different locations. But the focus that we have trying to bring them downtown for part of it was, was big. Um, this one is kind of more of an expanded event. We've always had our downtown parade go down Main Street, and it's very very well attended. It, it's it's great, um, but we wanted to make it and boost it and make it. A more of a day event. So we added um, a veteran flag field that people go through the week before a concert, pumped up our fireworks. And you'll you'll see, um, you know, all of this takes money and funds. We I, I am absolutely amazed at how great our business community is in sponsoring things. So you'll see how we're funded and almost all of them have sponsors. And we I, I don't Again, we're just really fortunate that they feel passion for the city and they're willing. We we get sponsors for for these events. And but we'll this one's about twenty five thousand to operate. And we most of that's funded with sponsors then city kicks and funds. And, and so does tourism. With um, this was a great ad because it wasn't organized by the city or county. We had two residents that saw the potential of with the downtown revitalization and more attention downtown, they said, hey, would you help us put on um, a, con a summer concert series? And we said, absolutely. If you organize it, we're, we, we're, uh, we, we have plenty of events that we're taking care of. So they they privately organized this, put out stage in the, and we shut down Vernal Avenue on a city portion of the street for them to do that. And they do a Saturday night a month. It's not a huge attendance, but it is, 
again, what, you know, more, one more set of activities that happen downtown. They have food trucks and vendors, um, bounce houses, and, and they do get sponsors. And then the city does put in a thousand and tourism puts in a little bit of money. That's been good. I, I hope they continue and, and just keep building on it because it's nice. Um, this one is our become either the biggest or second largest festival in Vernal. And it was, and we're now on our fifth year. So, uh, Leisha, you want to do dinosaur days? Yeah. So, um, just a little over five years ago, we had a hospitality committee and as we came together, we were trying to decide, um, a way that we could once again, get people in our hotels, eating in our restaurants. And, um, years and years ago, Vernal had had a hot air balloon festival and we thought, let's, let's bring that back. So it's called dinosaur days. Um, and it's just like progressively grown. We are now the largest hot air balloon festival in the state of Utah. Um, and the cool thing is the balloons launch in the mornings. Um, there's a lovely shot for you. On Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, they launch in the mornings um, from our community center, which is five blocks off of Main Street. But at night, on Friday and Saturday night, we shut down our Main Street and they do the night glow, um, which you see the pictures of. Um, it is the most successful weekend for all of our um, downtown businesses, the restaurants, the retail stores. Um, we do a huge craft fair. So people are down here. Um, they're down here all day on Friday. They're down here all day on Saturday. Um, they're there until the last balloon is put away in a trailer on Friday and Saturday night. And um, we, we've got 6,000 people here. You know, it's hard to ever really get an account at that. Um, but I, I would guarantee there's at least 6,000 there every night. Um, our local businesses, once again, they they sponsor the balloons. They're who um, make this possible because it, it costs about 40 to 50 grand to be able to put on something like this. And then Fernal City um, has their officers out there blocking the intersections, helping with the traffic control. We invite the local high school students down to perform the band, the drill team, the cheerleaders. Um, we also have a dino dash where um, they dress up as dinosaurs and they run two blocks. Um, we have live concerts on Friday and Saturday night. We have a beer garden in our local Cobble Rock Park. There's games, activities. Um, it's just a great time. It, I would say it is what um, has made our community fall in love with Main Street again. It's what has made our community okay with us putting millions of dollars into Main Street. I mean, it you know, they just didn't come downtown until we started Dinosaur Days. Like they'd pull into a restaurant, they'd pull into one store, but nobody really wandered the streets until we created this event and got them downtown in such an environment where they are making a memory and they want to bring back that feeling. And so they come downtown over and over again. Yeah, uh, I, I would totally echo that. There's something that just totally changed when, and, and it's like, I, I can't explain it, but when you give the street, when you give Main Street back, to the community and the people and pedestrians, they feel attached to it rather than semi trucks and cars that pass every every you know through every day. You you give it back to the people for a couple of nights, and it just makes a big difference. They feel ownership. And I think one thing that's different about this event versus like the the block party or the holidays or whatever is that we shut down the street and we really let them walk four blocks like. You know, there's nothing that's stopping them. They can interact with the businesses. They can do all of that. They just have free reign to be able to wander around. And it's it's just been super beneficial. It's because we don't have enough events. <laughs> we had to add one more or, or several more. <laughs> um, and this one is uh, our John Wesley Powell River Fest. And it's located in downtown um, in an area we call the Library Plaza or Library Park. Um, and a little known fact, we were one of the first areas to have commercial river rafting on the Green and Yampa Rivers. And so we wanted to celebrate that. So the 150th anniversary of John Wesley Powell running the river, we we created River Fest. And it, it's really grown thanks to a lot of effort with the committee and Leisha and her group. Um, but this picture is one of my, my favorite. Um, we with a wet, you know, Vernal's not near. We're we're ten, oh, about eight miles from the Green River, and so what's what's River Fest without water? We just kept scratching our head. How do we get water downtown? How do we get water downtown? And in uh, the back of the library, there's a detention basin, and that's what you're looking at here. 
So we're like, oh, we could. And just some creative people said, hey, let's put in a pit liner. We have oil filled pit liners clean, of course. Um, and so we were able to pit line it, fence it. And so we then you we worked um, with some local uh, to get some of the rafts and kayaks. And we pick up some every year as a city and county. So we're able to provide this free at charge and people absolutely love it. They It's only about three feet deep. Um, and so they're comfortable sending out their three-year-old or their five-year-old. And there's been many people that say this this really got them encouraged to um, buy, buy go and go ahead and buy a kayak or go ahead and buy a paddleboard and, and go then go on to the big lakes. So that, that one has been really fun. And of course, this is just one part of of the the event across the the driveway um is the actual event we have it, it's ended up being three days um music festival kind of on bluegrass but we'll take we'll take other other artists um, but we've have beer garden food trucks vendors cornhole tournament now our paddle pond and we get probably around three thousand a day that come through on that and that's that's been a really fun summer event Anything else on that one, Leisha? No, just put some pictures out there so you can kind of see like the music, the cornhole, the art vendors, the beer garden. Um, it's just a, a huge weekend event that brings down, you know, thousands of people. Yeah, the the pond has been like just the kind of the bonus of it. And we have we have to give people wristbands or else the wait would be hours. So we give them a wristband of what time they come back. So they they'll come register and then sign a waiver and then they come back at the time of their of their pond. So that's been really good. Um, this last year, um, we had heard about treasure hunts and and again, this isn't a new idea. We you know you have the the one the clients out in Salt Lake that do it um, and others. And we thought, well, we we want to do one ourselves. So we um, actually our escape room downtown that has opened in the last year. Um, I actually said, hey, would you, would the county and city help us with this? And we said, yeah, we, you know, let's do it. Let's, let's create this. Um, so a lot of creative thinking and a lot of um, uh, work, we, we created what's, we call the Outlaws Lost Treasure. Um, and we were able to get sponsors um, to get a thousand dollar loot. And our design was a, a lot of the treasure hunts are just open-ended. It might be a three-day hunt or people may be still looking for it for eight weeks our design we wanted someone to find it that weekend so we picked a weekend started friday morning at nine o'clock and we were going to guarantee with with hints or or progress that someone will find it by sunday night so we could have out out of town teams or out of town people that knew they could finish it in the in a weekend so we ended up and it blew us away this is our first year just just last july we ended up with 354 teams and you can see 1500 and then we we uh, had 200 from out of town. I think that we could grow. But that was a really fun event. We it was it was some creative thinking and it worked out really well. Um, so that was fun. Lisa, you want this one? Yep. <laughs> I guess I'll take this one. Um, so <laughs> Quinn, Quinn came with this idea and I was like, oh. I'm maxed out on events. Um, I have just a little office. There's just two of us. And, and as you've seen, we've got events going most weekends. And he's like, hey, I, I think we've got to capitalize on this paranormal stuff we've got going on in our town. So we want to create a paranormal conference. And I kind of was like, I, I don't know. I don't know if we can do it or not. But we went, we went, you know, in with both feet and we created what's called Phenomicon. Um, we believe, and it's uh, a four day, it's grown to four days now, a four day paranormal conference um, here, right here in, in Vernal, Utah. It's where the paranormal capital of the state. So we have a thousand plus attendees. They come from 37 states and three countries. It's four full days. Um, we are home to Skinwalker Ranch, which is on the History Channel, Wine Frog Ranch on the Discovery Channel, and Expedition Bigfoot on. I can't see that. Is that on the travel channel? Travel, yeah. Yeah. And um, we aren't really home to expedition, but we have one of the four characters um, on the there. on the show lives in Vernal. So yeah. he's on our he's on our committee and yeah. makes a lot of connections there. Yeah. So he he moved here and he's like, I want to be part of this. And 
And so we were claiming him and claiming part of Expedition Bigfoot because of that. Um, we also offer ghost hunts in downtown. So we have some, we have a, a hotel, um, we have an old train depot, we've got some different spots that are able to go and do some ghost hunting. Um, it brings in 2,000 plus hotel rooms, 9,000 plus mills, um, and it has an over a million dollar economic impact in our community. One thing I want to say is that this, this event was just created like in Quinn's mind and I'm sure some other people. So you, you just got to kind of figure out what your little niche is in your community. So um, whether you're about trains or you're about river rafting or you're about the paranormal or you're about flowers or whatever your niche is in your community, if you think you can make something out of that, go for it because that that's what Phenomicon was. And, and people are drawn here and every year at the conference, they're like, why Vernal, Utah? Like, it, it's not easy to get here. We don't have an international airport. They have to fly into Salt Lake. And if they come from Denver, uh, we do have a 50 passenger plane, but it's not, it doesn't always come in every day. Like, you know, if something goes wrong, it's not, it, it's more reliable than it used to be, but it, it's not convenient to get to Vernal. It's three hours from, from the Wasatch Front, but they want to be here because they want to come because this is where Skinwalker Ranch is. This is where Blind Frog Ranch is. And frankly, like we provide really good customer service. Our conference center is beautiful. Um, we have all the extra amenities, the petroglyphs, the they want to go and see and research and do that kind of stuff. So whatever your little niche is in your community, um, maybe start there. Start with an event around that little niche um, and get it going. We didn't have a thousand people the first year. Um, this we've done it for two years now. The first year we had 550 people and then we almost doubled it. Um, this year, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if we had close to 2000 people. I mean, it's just growing and growing and growing. We, we already have people asking registration opens February 1st. It's not until the middle of September, but we will sell out hundreds of tickets in the first day, just people wanting to get there and get the add on activities at the beginning. Hey, we do have a question that came in. Um, Christian, do you want to do you want to share that? Yeah, I'll share it. Um, and then I'm not sure why everybody can't see the Q and A questions. I set it up so that so that you could. I must be looking in the wrong spot. Yeah, <laughs> I can see the chat questions, but I I don't have a Q and A. Yeah, I don't have a Q and A either. Yeah, that's why I, I got that. Feedback. Yeah. So uh, Vernal Main Street is Highway 40, and we also have Vernal Avenue um, that's Highway 191 on the north side. So we have two highways that meet right in the middle of town, and they are, it is a UDOT ro roadway, correct. So we have, um, again, we have a good relationship, and hopefully that always continues. Um, they're, I think we're so far out that maybe they, they're okay with us having a little more flexibility on Main Street. Um, but we provide all the, we we shut Main Street down eight times a year. Um, and we have one more to talk about that where we shut down Main Street. Um, and they've been really good to work with. But we have to provide all the traffic control, all the police officers, all the detour signs. And and so we we have it down to a system now um, where, where we shut it down eight times a year. Okay, the next one. And this actually, there was the one Christian asked and we said, well, let, let us share more than just this one. Um, this is uh, one we started four years, five years ago, Hotel Vernal Haunt. And this is not um, a city and county event, but both Leisha and I are involved in it. <laughs> we have an awesome organizing committee. We have a 1947 hotel that's vacant, has 80 rooms. And it was just waiting for something to happen. And it was, it's spooky. Like you, you just walking the halls. Um, I do not like being there alone at night. It, it's just, just a kind of a spooky place. And so we were we were lucky, we were successful in getting a lease on that. And so we turned those 80 rooms into a, a haunt, a haunt tour, um, all for charity. So this has been a fun one. And it's it's right downtown. It's on 100 East Main Street. Um, so we do 10 nights in October. Last year we had 6,700 guests. Um, we have ordered 100 businesses sponsored, which is phenomenal amazing organizing committee we have a lot of fun with it and it takes 250 volunteers to run it 
uh, between makeup and tickets and security and all that. And then we donate. Um, last year we did 70,000 um, for the five year total. We've been at 278 and we pick charities in, in town. They have to be a UN county or a UN basin charity. Um, and we donate the funds to three a year. But we also expect them to help with with the volunteers and they and they do they do a good job. Um, but this one's been really fun. And it, why it has impacted downtown and we would never have really thought that. But people waiting in line, we have now two restaurants that wear hotel haunt shirts <clears throat> during those 10 nights because they they see the impact. And so they embrace it. And so that that was like an awakening that this this is actually making an impact. Super cool. Um, so yes, anything else on our, that, Misha? One of our big restaurants um, that's like right on the corner in on Main Street, he has his staff um, wear shirts for pretty much all of our events. So they get Dinosaur Day shirts, they get Hotel Haunt shirts, they wear shirts during the Paranormal Conference. Um, he really um, has like taken hold on the event thing and he just wants um, wants people to know like, hey, we're welcoming, we want people here. When there's an event going on, we want to make sure that we're a part of it. Um, and this is the best way. And then he also puts forth money. Like he, there's a question in there. Do the businesses sponsor and create a room? So um, he doesn't himself create a room, but um, he sponsors a room to be created. Um, and there are businesses in town that do actually want to like create a room. They want to just have a room where they can come in and have free um, creativity to be able to do that. And provide the actors and stuff for that. So then we have a lit plaque outside the room. They Most people are running by screaming, so they probably don't see it. <laughs> but <laughs> there's a lit plaque that, that shows what the rooms are sponsored by who. So that, that helps. And then there's a question about, um, or is there a master planner for the space? Yeah, a little bit of both. We, we leave it up to the business. Most of them say, no, you guys take care of it. Because so we've got some super creative people. Um, I, I don't know if the rest of Utah is like this. I haven't been that observant, but um, Vernal's a huge Halloween town. So this just was a great fit. Like people have, have really embraced the, the haunt. It's been, been a fun tradition. And speaking of Halloween, this is our last one here. Um, we ha have always had for several years a what they call a mayor's walk, which is a trick-or-treating event. And, but it was held at our rec center. And two years ago, the rec center said, hey, we don't have enough staff. We we don't want to do this anymore. And so it was a debate of do we keep it? Do we not? And, and I said, well, if the city's taking it, we're moving it downtown. And little did we know what the response would be. It has been amazing. So you can see, again, we shut down Main Street again. <laughs> and we had somewhere between six or 8,000 people. In fact, there were too many people. Like we just so we have businesses set up their tables in the middle of the street, and then the businesses on the side can can uh, have their tables right outside their their business. And luckily, the weather's been favorable the last few years, and we've just been oh, it's amazing how many people come down and take the street over. One good thing about this one is it really was relatively low cost. It's a lot of organization getting the businesses and having them in the right location and getting the mailers out. But it's really a big event for relatively low cost. So that one has been fun. People people have loved that one. Now it becomes tradition. <laughs> it's been two years. Now it's a tradition, I guess. Um, okay. What do we have in the future? These are some things we've been looking at. Um, winter festival, something to do in the winter. But we're kind of at capacity, so I don't know how we're going to do that. Where else can you have a vernal equinox party, right? So we're we're hoping to do that in the future. Um, figure out how to do that in a March timeframe. Um, Leisha is going to be looking at um, do do the next thing, Leisha. Yeah. So Vernal Foodie is a brand that we run out of the tourism office. We want to do a dining on Main. Um, they do they do that in in Park City. They line their Main Street with with tables and do do a dining on Main. We want to do something like that. Um, we just need a venue to be able to hold that in and that'll come in the presentation in a minute. And then we also have dinosaurs on Maine. So that came from an idea from an individual that attended a conference in North Carolina and they did mice on Maine. And so we're having these little um, dinosaur characters created. 
um, out of metal, they're sculpted, hand painted, they'll relate to the businesses that they're at. So whether they're a bike or, um, you know, a wagon with a brick in it to go with the bank, and then they'll be hid on Main Street on their business. And then we'll have a plaque in our, in our downtown plaza, Cobble Rock Park area where it will talk about the dinosaurs on Main, and then we'll have a storybook that'll go with it and it'll be a interactive hunt where they'll go to these businesses and they'll find these little sculptures and be able to um, really interact with the businesses that way. Yeah, kind of a hide and seek where's Waldo kind of thing. I think um, we have started our sidewalk cells again. They were decades ago. We tried to revamp those. So that's something we're working on and getting some good feedback. Um, and then our last thing, and we're running out of time too, um, we have as part of our downtown plan that again involved lots and lots of people and, and getting support. Um, we do eventually want a downtown festival venue. We have the property identified, we just haven't been able to secure it. Um, and, and of course, funding is always an issue. But we've used um, other communities. One that we went and visited was Casper. This has sort of been our inspiration for our downtown festival space that is on Main Street, right on Main Street, would be right downtown. We'd love to create something like this. this is our dream. Um, we're, we're several years away from this, um, but this would be then a, a place for the concerts and the festivals, kind of a, a main spot. Um, and this is David's station in Casper. And again, kind of our inspiration. Uh, Mill Creek Commons, I'm really impressed with what they've done there. It's kind of that same concept. This is summer, this is winter. So that's Christian, that's our presentation. I think, hope we kept in our time limit there. And, and also met <laughs> what people were looking for um, and, and what we're sharing. Again, we, we learned from other people. We really appreciate people on the, on the presentation today because we, we learned from you and your communities. And uh, we're, um, you know, we're, we're just doing the best we can here and, and creating these downtown and spaces. Thank so you, there Sam. is a question from Craig. Good, great question, uh, Craig. Um, the first one was, uh, do we encourage Native American community? Um, we do have uh, the U or a uh, Indian tribe um, within Uinta County. It's about 12 miles outside of Vernal, between Vernal and Roosevelt. Um, and you, you, we, we do see tribe members definitely coming into downtown and, and at our events, and we definitely encourage that. We've invited them to be sponsors because um, they have an enterprise group and there's been some success there. Um, but you're right. And it's something we've talked about is an event that would feature their great culture and their tradition. We we have talked about that. We just, you know, that event space would uh, would allow that to a greater degree. But that that is something we want to do and, and talked about just haven't fully fleshed that out. Could you please walk us through the process of bringing a new event downtown? Um, yeah. <laughs> so you're talking to, um, we do get a lot of partners, but I give a lot of credit to Alicia. She's, she, her and her office is amazing. Um, these have all come out of her office or um, so a few of them out of, out of, you know, city office. Um, one of them came out of our hospitality committee, which is combined of restaurants and and uh, hotels, um, and and the chambers involved as well. So it it's um, just somebody comes up with an idea. We put a committee together. Is it going to work? How would we fund it? Um, and and most of them end up working. I you know I'm trying to think of. Um, you know, some of them struggle a little bit, like the um, the private one, the Rock the Ride. They see struggle a little bit, um, and hopefully, they they continue to grow. But that's um, we we start the first year is always the hardest to get it all planned. Um, once when you get a routine down, like Balloon Fest is almost how many we are, we're down to like four meetings on Balloon Fest just because everybody knows their role. Everybody knows who contacts who. We know who sets up what. City does this. County does this. So the first year is always the hardest. It's it's the the next year becomes easier. Um, like our treasure hunt, we've already we have our second meeting this 
um, week and and that committee. And that's not until August, so or July. So you know, we tried to start early and get that planned. Um, um, so one thing they asked about funding. So I run an event funding application through the county. It's funded through restaurant tax that we collect here. Um, that's a use that you can use that tax money for. Um, most of your counties around the state have some type of event funding. Um, I'm not sure in the bigger, like Salt Lake um, and Utah County, I'm not positive about those two counties, but the rest of the counties usually have an event funding um, application that you can apply for and get money from them. Um, uh, a lot of people, they'll, they'll usually come to Quinteri if they're asking like how to start an event just because they know that we put on so many of the events. There is like a mass gathering permit and community development. Um, there's some permits through the city that you need to get. Um, you need to work with the state if you're selling something on, on your sales tax. Um, so there's there's definitely some different process that you, processes that you have to go through. And then another question was who typically takes lead in planning and organizing the events? Well, we love it when private partners come in and take the lead and just ask us to serve on the committees. That would be ideal if all of them could happen that way. But um, probably 85% of them, the city or the county do take lead and then bring in other partners as well as the people that generate the idea and then form those committees to be able to meet and plan those events. Luessa, if I say that right, love the name, um, says what has been the most effective letting people know. Um, Vernal is a huge Facebook town. I, I don't know <laughs> how long that's been that way, but Facebook is the place to connect everybody. So we do big on Facebook. Our radio stations are pretty effective, amazing enough. Like, you know, a lot of radios phased out, but not not here. So we do partner with the radio a lot and they'll they'll sometimes do them for low cost or half cost as, as kind of helping promote the event. Um, and then posters, a lot of them we do posters. I know some of them we've done table tents on um, in the restaurants. So when people go sit down, they they have a table tent with a QR code. Um, what else, Leisha, you have your marquee board. You put um, we, have the, we have a marquee board on Main Street, radio. It just depends. It depends on what the budget is. Like Facebook's free, right? Um, or it costs me very little to be able to boost something. Um, hang posters in the windows. Um, a lot of, once you get an event going, a lot of it's just like word of mouth. I do an event calendar every year. We also have an event calendar called thisisvernal.com where it's our like robust calendar where everyone puts their stuff from the, City, county, rec district, conference center, um, our equestrian park, our outdoor dirt facility. Everybody puts their events on there and then you can subscribe and it emails you every single Sunday what's happening in your community that week. It lets you upload posters. So it's a Trumba calendar. Is that what it is, Quinn? Yeah, we use Trumba. Yeah. Um, we borrowed that from Ogden. <laughs> yeah, it's been successful for us. Um, and so people know about it that way. Um, it's just finding out how your community finds out about stuff and, and everyone finds out a different way. Like there's a market that's radio. There's a market that's newspaper. There's a market that's posters. There's a market that's Facebook. There's a market that's the calendar. Like, and so it's really just figuring that out, but then like pushing it out as far as you have funds to be able to push it. And one of the great things, once when it's established, like balloon fest on our fifth year, we do market it, but everybody knows when Balloon Fest is like that. That's become a like a tradition. Like you, you have to promote it and let people know the dates. But now they know what it is and how to do it, and 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 they plan their vacations around it. Um, what have been the most elements of your downtown plan so far? Um, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm interpreting that a couple different ways. I'll I'll do my best. Um, so our downtown plan, and, and um, it's been exciting, um, but again, it's been a lot of, of work and partnership. Um, we This summer is our major first construction projects because it's taken a couple of years to get to that point and get the funding and design. So our first projects this summer are redoing Vernal Avenue downtown to make it more pedestrian friendly, street lights, flowers, trees, um, and more, again, pedestrian friendly bulb outs. And then we have two major 
public parking lot walkways behind the buildings that are going in this summer. And amazing enough, and we're so glad the development community has responded to our plan. And so we have two mixed use buildings going in, in Vernal, uh, our first ones. Um, we have two uh, four story buildings going in this summer. Um, they're, they're twin buildings. Um, one's called Jurassic Heights, one's Raptor Heights, right down at First South, and they're uh, commercial with condos above it, which we need housing, so it helps. Sometimes people oppose what the Main Street program as well as well City and County. Do you unknown reason simply because it is viewed as government? Yep. It seems you have a lot of local support and avoided this. What is one way you think you're successful maintaining? Awesome question, positive citizen local support. Um, I, I, I can, I can I'll, I'll answer part of that and at least you, you answer it for the events. For the downtown plan, the absolute secret to that was as much involvement as we possibly could. We took longer process, to make sure that we got everybody we could think of involved, including the school district, including the water conservancy district, um, and and residents and surveys and walking tours and the businesses. So that that was one way that we felt like they felt ownership in it. And so that went for the planning part. For the event part, Leisha, do you want to answer that one? How do we get people to not view this as like a government thing and view it more as like a community effort? Um, I I don't think our community minds that it is a government effort in a lot of events, um, which we actually have kind of the opposite thing, like where we're like trying to get the community to, to take some initiative and like help us with those events, right? Um, and I think a lot of that started back with, with holidays. Um, this is going to be the 20th year for holidays. And so the city started putting that on and it kind of put into the mind of the residents like, hey, the government can do some pretty cool things for us. And it's just, um, I, I don't, I don't know. I I don't I don't hear or see that people complain that the city, the county put on events. So and and over time, like you take holidays, we've we push more and more for sponsorship and say, hey, this is a community event for your employees, for their families. Help us make it special. Help us make it something they remember and it makes Vernal special. You have an easier time recruiting uh uh employees if there's these events like you know you if you have somebody attend holidays and balloon fest they're gonna be like this is a pretty cool town i i could live here so we had for example and it is absolutely amazing i i'm continually amazed we had sixty thousand in in donations to holidays this year and you could do a lot with sixty thousand for an event but it was all the businesses that put that money in um and made it work so we again we're just really fortunate that way um, Adrian asked about the developer who's doing the four-story mixed use. They um, have developments. Uh, they are a Provo Orem-based business, Evolve. And I know they have work in primarily Utah County, based Payson, Spanish. I don't know about Salt Lake, but they might. Um, and they just sort of took a liking to Vernal because of the recreational opportunities. They have Jeeps and ATVs, and they they took a liking to Vernal. and. They're willing to put some money here, which we're grateful for. Um, National Register, we do have some, um, and and you're. I I need to learn a lot more about that. We we have met with the SHPO group, um, and we and we need to do more there. Um, uh, we, our bank is, and and uh, a couple other buildings, but we we need to be more engaged in that. Um, how long is Main Street? Do you determine where to start and end? Yeah, great, great, great question. Um, so Ver, um, Main Street is actually several miles long. Um, it's Highway 40, so it comes all the way through Main Street and through our neighboring town, smaller town, Naples. We we have to cut the, um, we have two locations that we cut Main Street off for traffic uh, diversion. One is a parade route that ends up being from 8th to 5th. So that's um, a mile and three blocks. But if we can, we go 5th to 5th for like 
Balloon Fest and the concert and the Halloween because we have signals at both Fifth East and signal at Fifth West. And it's it's easy for truck traffic to divert to First North. Um, so so that is fifth to fifth. So that's 10 blocks. It's about a mile is what we shut down. Yeah, great question. Super, super good. Um, that, that's kind of a wrap. Um, really appreciate all the insight and and effort and and hopefully this helps somebody somewhere with with one of their events. Thank you so much, <laughs> Quinn and Leisha. That it, I, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I thought that was that was amazing, and uh, I thought the Q and A was very helpful. The whole presentation was was amazing. Um, thank you so much. We will be putting this up as a on our Shippo YouTube channel. Um, Amber in the chat put a link to our previous, one of our previous webinars on murals. You can watch all of our previous uh, recordings there and this recording should be up soon if you want to watch again. Um, and thank you so much for attending and we'll look forward to seeing you on February 1st at 11 a.m. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks Christian. Thank you. Thanks, Quinn. Thanks, Leisha. Thanks.